away from this place as I can. Welcome back, Doctor. What can I do for you? Do you need any help? <coughs> Can't be good for business to see the bartender cough in your beer. Indeed, it would be a shame to taint the delicate taste. Oh, thank you, Dr. Reed. My customers and I, we all thank you. Goodbye, Mr. Watts. Good evening, Mr. Delaney. What? Ah, oh, you're a doctor. Inebriation aside, do you need medical help? Yes. I feel sicker than usual these days. I think I'm losing my mind. Perhaps I should shut the turquoise. Take this, then. And perhaps you could try to slow down the alcohol intake, too. Hey, Doc, you don't really want me to stop the only remedy I can afford. So few clients. What with the epidemic, no one dares go outside. Goodbye, Mr. I Delaney. They live long enough to see them wet boot boys get what's coming to them. Evening, miss. Well, I never. That's a first. Customers who make that much mess rarely come back. Don't mind in fancy togs. I'm much more myself than when we first met. By the way, I'm Jonathan, Dr. Jonathan Reed. Welcome back to the Turquoise Turtle, then, Doctor. I'm Sabrina Cavendish. How can I help you? Do you require medical assistance, Miss Cavendish? Don't feel so good, if you have to know. I knew that keeping the bar open with the epidemic wasn't a good idea. Take this. It'll help. Perhaps you should think about closing the Turquoise Turtle for a while. Tom always said we've got to keep the doors open. <clears throat> but thank you, Doctor. Excuse my curiosity, but where exactly are you from, Miss Cavendish? Something bothering you? What, my name? Or my complexion? Believe me, I never judge someone on their place of birth or the color of their skin. If that's true, you'd be one of the few not to make fun of me. Just you, Tom, Dyson, Miss Fishburn, and of course, Mr. Hampton. I'm sorry if I worried you. I was just curious to find out if you know this part of town well. Nosy. My dad was a sailor from Bombay, and my mum was a maid born up in Glasgow. They got married in London, and here I am. Miss Cavendish, would you be willing to help me locate Sean Hampton? You better ask Tom, sir. Why not answer me directly? We respect the privacy of our customers here, sir. Only Tom can decide who to speak to and what he'll say to them. Goodbye, Miss Cavendish. There's got to be something can be done to get out of this bullshit mess. No? So few clients. But with the epidemic, no one dares go. Are they stupid or something? I've never even been to India. It's a good thing you can't see me now. Andrew, what have you done? You should have talked to me. Good evening, sir. I'm amazed you made it back to the docks alone. Good for you. Well, I could say the same about you, young man. More to the point, who the hell are you? I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. And I am Archer Woodbead. Please excuse my assertiveness. I often forget I'm just an old prune. Have you always been so bitter? It's not bitterness. It's poorly masked disgust. When everything turns to shit, we all have to eat a spoon or two. 
With everything that's happened recently, the war, Spanish flu, I must concede that these are difficult times. A few nights ago, I saw a kid eating a rat. He was right in front of one of those abandoned houses nearby, just chewing on a living rat's insides. Tell me everything you know about the Guard of Prewen. Andrew never told me what they do. I do know they're vigilantes with military training. Access to some impressive firepower. And what is your personal opinion about the Guard, then? This Guard of Prewen is just another gang preying on the young and naive. Preying on people like my boy. I know how it works. I invented it. Why did your son really join the Guard of Prewen? If I believed in a higher power, I'd see this as punishment for my own sins. I deserve it for all the young men I enlisted back in the day. You don't believe in God, though, do you, Mr. Woodbeat? So why did he join? Now I think about it. Andrew joined the Guard, not to defy me, but to follow in my footsteps, to make me proud. So your son has left you nothing to explain his actions? No letter or message? Not even a note. I'm a proud man, Dr. Reed. But I would kneel and pray if I thought it would give me my Andrew back. If you were such a respected figure, surely you have many interesting stories about this part of town. You bet I do, but make no mistake. I'm no rat, sir. Some secrets are best left buried. Do you still know anyone? From the old days, I mean. Most of them are dead. I still give Miss Gillingham salutations. She doesn't remember me. She did once like me. Boy, <laughs> She was a beauty back then. Any remarkable new faces around here? Nobody. Well, there's that boy Rufus the Curse. I like him, despite the reputation he's made since his parents died. Poor little bastard. Who would you trust around here? The owner of the Turquoise Turtle's a decent fella. Tom's his name. Sean Hampton's all right, too. Don't particularly share his religious views. He's quite devout, if you catch my meaning. I'm sure a district as colorful as the docks must have plenty of stories about strange visitors and creepy characters. So, you want me to talk about the sewer dog, don't you? If you don't mind. The sewer dog is a bitch. Appropriately named, an old woman dressed in rags. She has an elegance, though. Despite her ugliness, I saw her once. Scared the life out of me. What can you tell me about this part of town? People used to feel safe around here. They had the gangs protecting them. Now all they do is bicker and plot against one another. Missing the good old days, are you not? Trust me, son. The longer you live, the less meaning your existence will have. You need to remember the days you still had beliefs. And what about the gangs? Back in my day, people trusted the wet boot boys. We looked out for the docks and its families. Nowadays, they're just a bunch of greedy fuckers. You were a gang member? I was their leader for a time, believe it or not. Now these bastards act like I'm nothing. Not one of them. They owe me some damn respect. Tell me about the wet boot boys, Archer. I want to know more. We were there for the families and each other. It was us against the world. We were vicious, tough, even cruel. But we were united. You sound like you were some kind of radical union member. Yes, nowadays the communists and gangs squabble over pointless territory. Sounds stupid when you say it out loud. Goodbye, sir.
I cannot enter. Watch yourselves! There's one of them! Ugh! 
The wounds on this corpse are deep, the result of rabid rage. If this is Sean's doing, he's become a murderous beast.
Better go home, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, miss. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. Can I help you? A fancy doctor lurking at night by the docks? <laughs> Not fishy at all. And what about you? Working outside at night in this dangerous part of town? You want to know my secret? I'm trying to earn money. And I'm Lottie Paxton, by the way. Is it not dangerous to work here at night? As long as I have good legs, I can run away from trouble. The sad saint now provides me and my sister a bed and a roof. I don't want to lose that. Are you homeless, Miss Paxton? Mr. Hampton's night asylum is our new home now. It's a safe place for me and my sister. What can you tell me about the Sad Saint? It's just the nickname of Sean Hampton, the Sad Saint of the East End. He gave me shelter, and he's not always sad. What can you tell me about this place? How are things here? It may be okay for a strong girl like me, but a dandy doctor from the city like yourself? You better watch your back, Mr. Reed. Which local dangers must I avoid? Well, the gangs, the thieves, the drunks, the jobless. A man with your fancy clothes will attract a lot of attention. Well, I am not someone so easily intimidated. Glad to hear that. And if you get into trouble, you can always seek help at Sean Hampton's shelter. No one would dare to be violent there. You really think I should go back to a safer place, miss? No. I think you would better stay and help as many people as you can. Just avoid the wet boot boys. Those bastards are worse than the epidemic. I'm looking for Sean Hampton. Can you help me? Mr. Hampton must be in his office at the night asylum he manages, I suppose. Why do you want to see him? He was a patient of mine at the Pembroke Hospital, but he left abruptly. I see. Well, Mr. Hampton is a discreet and dedicated man. I'm sure you'll find him soon enough. Goodbye, Miss Paxton. This Seymour worries yeah. me. People are still working at this sure time. Something about him. Why the long face, Doctor? It looks like we both have changed a lot. I must confess, it saddens me, Sean. 
Put your faith in the Lord, Doctor. He has a plan for all of us. We may not always see it, but he does. Since you left Pembroke, the amount of blood that has been shed, it's hard to believe you, Sean. Ask what you will. As the Lord is my shepherd, I will not speak a lie to you. Aren't you afraid of what you've become? We are blessed, Doctor. Can't you see it? The Lord has made us able to walk amongst the plague and aid those that need it. Do you think this is a blessing when God's own house and holy symbols repel you? If that is your burden, Doctor, so be it. But I do not fear the cross, nor am I forced to take the life of another. My kind doesn't share your imperfections. But you must drink blood now to survive. No, not your scripture. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So saith the Lord. I only need to eat flesh, no blood. Why return here? This is my home. These people are my flock. You will always find me where I am needed. Wonders never cease. Skull managing an asylum. And what of you? A vampire doctor? Meals laid out before you. Yet you restrain. And what about William Bishop? He tried to take care of you. But this hunger, this thirst, cannot be restrained. Alas, poor William. He had a good soul, but was weak in spirit. He could not shake the thirst for booze, never mind blood. But have faith. My will is far stronger than his. Why did you kill Miss Jones at the Pembroke Hospital? Killed old Harriet? You must be mad, Doctor. Why would I do such a thing? So you claim Miss Jones' death was not by your hand, nor the other incidents at Pembroke? Though Harriet was an angry, spiteful woman, she was one of God's creatures. I have nothing but love for all he has made. But you were close to her. Of course. But she was lost, separated from the fold. She did not see the hand of the divine in my blessed condition. People have been murdered. I've seen the blood. I don't believe you can be trusted. Have a little faith, Doctor. If you will follow, I will guide you to the light. How do you plan to do that? Take this key of the old sewers. The entrance is by the riverbank, south from here. There you'll find all the proof you need. I will not look kindly on you if you're trying to trick me. I'll be here when you return. If you still think I'm a threat then, well, I surrender myself to your judgment. <laughs>